On my first example, I want to write each expression as a polynomial in standard form. I have x times the quantity of x minus 3 squared. Let's expand this quantity. That gives me x times x minus 3 times x minus 3. This is a product of linear factors of our polynomial. Let's FOIL the last two quantities, bring down my x. First gives me x squared, outer, minus 3x, inner, minus 3x, and last, plus 9. Let's combine like terms. That's going to give me, when I bring down my x, x squared on the inside, minus 6x when I combine like terms, plus 9. Let's distribute. That gives me x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x. My polynomial is in descending order. Therefore, this is in standard form. And we want to write each expression as a polynomial in standard form. Let's expand this quantity. I bring down my x plus 1, x minus 2 times x minus 2. I'm going to start with foiling the last two. I could pick any two to foil, but I'm going to start with the last two. Bring down my x plus 1. First, x times x is x squared. Outer, minus 2x. Inner, minus 2x. And last, plus 4. Let's combine like terms. x plus 1. I'm going to have inside my parentheses x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now let's distribute each term in this quantity through each term in this quantity. That's going to give me x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. Distribute the 1 through gives me positive x squared. minus 4x plus 4. Let's put this in descending order of exponents and combine like terms. That's going to give me x cubed minus 4x squared plus x squared gives me a minus 3x squared. The 4x's drop out and plus 4. In these examples, I'm given a polynomial in standard form, and what they want me to do is to write them in factor form. So I need to factor each polynomial. To do that, recall I need to factor completely, which means I need to check if there's a GCF that I can factor out. In my first example, I can factor out a negative 2x. Now I need to watch the sign since I'm factoring a negative out. A negative divided by a negative is a positive 2x squared. Positive divided by a negative is a negative 5 x, and a positive divided by a negative is a negative 12. Now I need to factor this trinomial, still bring down my GCF, and I'll factor the trinomial into two sets of parentheses. The first term is going to break up into 2x and x, and my last term will break up into a 4 in the second term and a 3 in the first term, and that will be a plus minus. Now we can check that by doing our first term, which is 2x squared. Our inner terms are going to be a negative 8x and 3x is going to give me a negative 5x and then my last term gives me a negative 12. So this is my factored form and these are my linear factors of my polynomial. Again, I want to check for a GCF on my second example. Here I can factor out a negative 3 x, and when I factor out my negative 3, a negative divided by a negative is a positive 4x squared, and here 27 divided by a negative 3 is a minus 9. Now I recall that this is a binomial, but it's a difference of squares, so I can bring down my GCF and break this into two parentheses, and the difference of squares breaks into 2x and 2x. My signs, we call are plus, minus, and again, my perfect square here is 3 and 3.
is. Again, I can check that. My outer term's a negative 6x. My inner term's a positive 6x. So the middle term would drop. That gives me 4x squared minus 9. Our first definition gives us the relative maximum and minimum of a function. This is the height above and below the x-axis when the function is graphed. Therefore, the maximum would be the maximum value of y in a region, while the minimum would be the minimum value of y in a region on a graph. The x-intercept are known as the zeros of the graph. These are the values for which y equals zero. Therefore, the relative max and min is above and below the y-axis, while I have a zero where the y value is zero for the graph. In other words, our x-intercepts. Here I have a graph of a polynomial. And what I have is a relative maximum. That's my greatest y value between these two x-intercepts. And my relative minimum, my y value below my x-axis between these two x-intercepts. And I have my x-intercepts, which gives me my y value that is 0. So I have three things demonstrated here. The relative maximum, the largest y value between a constraint of these two x-intercepts, a y value which is the lowest between these two x-intercepts, and I also have the y values where they are zero, hence called the zeros of the polynomial, which are the x-intercepts. Also, we have equivalent statements about polynomials, things that we can say that all mean the same thing. For example, this is a polynomial, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. It is in standard form, descending order. I can factor that into x minus 5 and x minus 1. It's linear factors. Therefore, I can state that x minus 5 and x minus 1 are the factors of this function. I can also state, if I solve this, as we did in previous chapters, I can solve this for x equal to 5 and x equal to 1. And that tells me that 5 and 1 are solutions of that function. It also tells me that 5 and 1 are the x-intercepts of the graph. In other words, y becomes 0, I could solve x equal to 5. I could also solve x equal to 1 when y is 0. That's why 5 and 1 are the zeros of the function, or also known as the x-intercepts of the function. These are all equivalent statements about polynomials, and specifically in this case, this polynomial. Our next definition is multiplicity. That is when a linear factor of a polynomial is repeated. If it's repeated, then the zero is repeated. A repeated zero is called a multiple of zero. In other words, multiplicity. Here's an example. I'm given a polynomial in standard form, x to the fourth minus 10x cubed plus 25x squared. We factor that completely. Factor out a GCF, I have x squared. And when I factor that out, that's x squared minus 10x plus 25. And when I factor the trinomial, I get x minus 5 times x minus 5. Now you can see that my x minus 5 is repeated. It's repeated twice. Also, you can see that my x is repeated twice. Therefore, I know the solution, or 0, or even x-intercept, I can call them all the same, are going to be 0 and 5 if I would solve this when I set y equal to 0. But the big question is, what's the multiplicity? Well, for each of these, the multiplicity would be 2. And that is because they are repeated in each instance twice. If, for example, I had an extra x minus 5 to the right here, in other words, another linear factor, then my x would have a multiplicity of 2, but my x minus 5 would have to have a multiplicity of 3. In this example, they want me to find the zero of each function and state the multiplicity. This is already factored, so I can set my y to 0 and expand the right side. And we know from solving polynomials, I can divide both sides by x and x plus 3, and that leaves me x plus 3 equals 0. I can divide both sides by x and this x plus 3 and get x plus 3 equals 0. Or I could divide both sides by this x plus 3 and this x plus 3 and get x equal to 0. In other words, when I solve for polynomials, all I have to do is substitute in a 0 for y and set each linear factor to 0, and then solve these equations. That gives me x equal to a negative 3, x equal to a negative 3, and x equals 0. 
Remember from our previous slide, we know that this is the solution to my polynomial. These are the zeros to my polynomial, and these are my x-intercepts of my polynomial. That's when y is equal to zero. My multiplicity is with these two solutions, and these are repeated zeros, and they have a multiplicity of two. Again, we want to find the zeros of the function and state the multiplicity. Again, this is factored, so I'll just set my y to zero and expand the right side. Now I'm going to set each term to zero and solve. Divide by 3, I get x equal to 0. Add 1 to both sides, I get x equal to 1. And x plus 4 equals 0. And that is repeated twice. So x equals a negative 4, and x equals a negative 4. And you can see I have a repeated 0 at x equals a negative 4, so that means my multiplicity here is 2. Again, in the next example, uh, we have to find zeros and state the multiplicity. I've already solved this problem. We'll just walk through it. I have a function of y equals 28x cubed minus 7x. I need to factor completely since it hasn't been factored. I find a GCF of 7. That gives me 4x squared minus 1 when I factor that out. This becomes a difference of squares. So I put down two sets of parentheses and factor this to 2x and 2x plus minus and then 1 and 1. Now I set y equal to 0 and set each linear factor to 0. That gives me 7x equals 0, which means x is 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals a negative half. And 2x minus 1 equals 0, or x equals a half. Each one is an independent solution, or not repeated zeros, and each is a zero of the function, each is a solution of the function, and each is an x-intercept. So we have no multiplicity other than each one is an independent solution. Again, they want me to find the zero and the multiplicity. Here, again, I solved, and we're just going to walk through the problem again. I want to find the GCF. I'm going to factor out a negative 2. When I do that, I really watch the signs. A negative divided by a negative is a positive x squared. Positive divided by a negative is a negative 7x. And a positive divided by a negative is a negative 18. Now I'm going to factor this trinomial. So I put down two sets of parentheses. Bring down the GCF. That gives me x minus 9 and x plus 2. Set my y to 0 and set each linear factor equal to 0, which means I get a negative 2x equals 0, or x equals 0. x minus 9 equals 0, or x equals 9. x plus 2 equals 0, or x equals a negative 2. Again, these are not repeated zeros, so my multiplicity is still 1. I don't need to write it. And I know that these are the solutions of my polynomial, the zeros of my polynomial, and also the x-intercepts of my polynomial. Next, we have the factor theorem. In other words, the expression x minus a is a linear factor of a polynomial if and only if the value of a is a zero of the related polynomial. In other words, it's a solution of the polynomial. Then a can be substituted in to make a linear factor of that polynomial. In other words, we can rewrite a polynomial function if we know the zeros of the polynomial by finding the product of the linear factors. Let's take a look at an example. Remember that theorem stated that we have x minus a is a linear factor. And when I say these are my zeros, I know that I have a negative 2, 3, and 1. Therefore, I can substitute these values, which are a, into this and make linear factors of each. And remember, when they're linear factors, this is going to be x minus, because that is minus, a is a negative 2, x minus, and a is 3, and x minus, and a is 1, which gives me y equal to, I can simplify that to x plus 2, and then I can FOIL these two. 
that gives me first x squared, outer minus x, inner minus 3x, and last plus 3. Now I can simplify that set of parentheses here. That gives me x plus 2. And that's going to give me, when I simplify, x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now I'm going to distribute each term in this binomial through the trinomial, which gives me y equal to x cubed minus 4 x squared plus 3x when I factored the x through this entire term. And then when I factor the 2, I'm going to get 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. Now I combine like terms, and I get x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. And this is my polynomial in standard form given from these zeros. Same directions, let's find a polynomial given the zeros. And we remember the theorem states that x minus a is our linear factor. So I know that these are my a's that are given to me. So y equals x minus a negative 5, x minus a negative 3, and x minus 0. That's going to give me y equal to x minus 0 is just x, so I'm going to bring that out front. If we factor, that would have been our GCF. So now let's simplify these to be x plus 5 and x plus 3. And let's FOIL these two. y equals, bring down my x, and when I FOIL, that gives me x squared plus 3x plus 5x plus 15. That gives me y equal to x times, let's simplify inside, x squared plus 8x plus 15. We finish by distributing the x. So y equals x cubed plus 8x squared plus 15x. And that's our polynomial in standard form. Our next example, again, we want to write a polynomial in standard form given the zeros. Recall that our theorem states that our linear factor is x minus a. That tells me when I have a, and this is a solution, a negative 2, but a multiplicity of 2, that I can write this as x equals x minus a negative 2 and x minus a negative 2, because it's a repeated 0. Simplifying, that gives me x plus 2, x plus 2, and then I just FOIL y equals x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. Then I simplify. That gives me y equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. And that is my polynomial function in standard form.